If you could do anything you wanted to do without anything holding you back, what would it be? Everyone has a purpose in life and others want to hear the purposeful value that is in you. Now, here is the host of the Value in You show, your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Well, it's not L.S. Kirkpatrick speaking at the moment, but I have her with me. And yes, this is her show and this is her first show. I am Christine McIver. I am the CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, and it is my honor and privilege to introduce L.S. Kirkpatrick to the Inspired Choices Network, to all of our listeners and our viewers out there. Welcome, L.S., to your show, Value in You. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to start this new adventure. I love it. I love working with you and I'm just so excited to get to know my audience. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. So we are going to have, you know, the number one rule, and I don't think I told you this, is the number one rule is you have to have fun. That's, All right. the, that's the number one rule is you have to have fun because why are we doing this if we're not having fun? right? Oh, uh, it's such an important piece to keep in mind. What, whatever you're doing out there is ha be sure that you're having fun in it because the world will just be a better place and you'll, you'll actually contribute more to the world when you're having fun. So welcome, LS. I'm really excited for you to begin this journey with us and to share your knowledge and begin to share you know, all of the brilliance that you've acquired in the world and uh, to contribute to our world. So I am going to officially read your bio okay. Then I am going to read today's show. So today's show, the topic is you have great value in you. And um, I know that those are just easy words to say, and you're going to have a lot more to share with us about that. And then we're going to just jump right into it and see where the show wants to take us. So if you're watching live and you um, have a question for LS, please join us at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com forward slash chat room. And if you are if you are watching live, give us a hashtag live. Or if you're watching replay, hashtag replay. Uh, we want to know where you are, what you're enjoying, and um, so we can talk with you as well. So let's talk about who this wonderful woman is. So L.S. Kirkpatrick is an eight-time international best-selling author, radio, TV, and podcast host, international or international and inspirational speaker and guiding mentor who guides 25 to 42 year old young women who have lost themselves in their schooling motherhood and careers and are wondering if there if this is all there is i thought i was meant to do more ls has the wisdom and experience of a life well lived and wants you to know that you have great value in you no one has had to make the choices you have made. No one has had to live with the choices that you have made that directly affect you. You alone have a uniqueness that only you have, and others want to hear you. Whether you are doing some soul searching, writing a book for the first time or fifth time, or wanting to be an entrepreneur, LS can guide you into your wisdom and vision in the way that the world does business today. And that is changing often. She stays on top of the current trends by educating herself and listening to her coaches and mentors. As Audrey Hepburn said about the word impossible, word impossible, the very word itself says, I'm possible. And you can connect with LS at lskirkpatrick.com. How easy is that? <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so today's show. You have great value in you. Do you doubt your abilities in your business or relationship? Have you struggled with imposter syndrome? Easy for you to say. Do you look to others as having more value, value than yourself? If any of those questions are true for you, are you ready to change them and truly see the great value in you? In this show, L.S. Kirkpatrick, <laughs> guiding coach and mentor guides you to see the great value you have in yourself and explains how your value never runs out. Oh, I like that. I like that. How your value never runs out. You have done so much. You're an eight time international best-selling author. Like, hello. 
<laughs> Fantastic. You, um, you've obviously learned a great deal in your life, as you say in your bio. Where, where did you start? Like you were born and raised in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, actually out in Oregon. In Oregon. Okay. And what was your first, um, what was your first profession that you went into? I don't know if I ever went into a profession. I just, I just enjoyed life and, and did what I liked. Um, the medical field would be, be the first, first profession, whether it was um, certified medical assistant when they were first coming out, um, EMT, uh, rescue, anything to do with that. I really had a hard time deciding between animals and people because I love them both. And I thought, well, I'll go into people because they actually are a little more important than the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would say they're, they're less easy to work with than the animals, though. So. Well, perhaps, but <laughs> <laughs> when, when it comes right down to it, I had to go with the bare bones of things. <laughs> right. And then, and then where did you evolve from there? So you're in the medical field. Where did that take you next? Oh boy. Um, life takes me. It's not that one thing in particular takes me. So, um, you know, I've always been involved with animals. Love that. When I first got out or before I got out of high school, I wanted to be a marine biologist, believe it or not. And I was discouraged from other marine biologists saying there just weren't careers out there. Um, I found out, yes, there are. I don't know why they say that. And <laughs> they're still saying it today. So if you want to be a marine biologist, go for it. Don't let anybody tell you no. Um, and so I did. I actually became um, an aquarium. I uh, don't quite know what the term is now that they're using, but I could work in public aquariums. I was certified as scuba diver. Um, one thing I need to correct, and this is, is just on my mind, that's why I'm stumbling over my words, is I probably uh, accidentally wrote it down, didn't mean to. I'm not an international speaker yet, but well, I am you, a speaker. You are right now because this show is <laughs> now right. an international platform, so you can just oh, go awesome. by that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have a premonition. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. And, and actually, that's what one thing that I tell people, especially in my books that I write or, or when I'm speaking, is you have to celebrate the little victories. You know, celebrate anything good that happens. You've got to do that because that really just fills you up. It gets your brain thinking that, well, I'm really something special because you are something special. And yeah, celebrate the little things. And it's like, well, have a good day. Shout it out loud. Yes. I, I want you to try something. I okay. know you've been working hard all day and I'm sure everybody has, or almost everybody has that's, that's watching. So I learned about laughter yoga. Have you ever heard of that before? Well, I've heard of it. I, I haven't taken it. I haven't either. My very first time speaking and having other people speak was a summit I did last March and the young man that came on um, was Mr. O'Dwyer he's called the spiritual gentleman you can find him online and he taught us all how to have laughter yoga and all you do is just start laughing so Christine I want you to start laughing and I'm going to start laughing and just give a big belly laugh and just start laughing just ha 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 <laughs> get those shoulders shaking and what that does it just really stirs you up inside and gets your blood moving and gets yeah. your healthy juices flowing and it, and it just makes you makes you ready to go on so if you're starting to get a little tired in the day because I know we're getting into those hours for me it was always two o'clock if I sat down between two and three o'clock I was out like a light especially when I had kids and now that I'm older, it's like, I still don't sit down on those hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, that just yeah. the idea of laughing starts to make me laugh. <laughs> yes. Yes. We had, when I was in college, there was a, a young lady there 
she had one of these very contagious laughs. When she started laughing, everybody started laughing. I never experienced that before. I loved it. You just wanted to be around her. You did anything you could to get her to start laughing because it just makes you feel so good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay. So we, we kind of detoured a little bit. So you went into, you went into the medical and then you chose humans and then, then where did you evolve from there? Um, uh, doing the aquarium science, working oh, right. in public aquariums, um, which I really loved, you know, talking about marine biology, that was a great thing to do. Um, and, and then I kind of stayed home. My mom uh, had a stroke and she had gotten to the point that she needed to take to be taken care of. I didn't have any job opportunities at the time. I wasn't really seeking that hard. I just finished my degree. I'd been volunteering at a public aquarium and I thought, okay, I can, I can take care of my mom for a while. So I did that. And um, it's tough. It is so tough taking care of a parent, but I loved it because I got to spend time with her that I normally would have not have gotten to spend with her um you know watching her my mom could do just about anything she was a uh, great with crafts you know crocheting needlepoint um anything and i watched i got her a pillowcase so she could do needlepoint on it and she finally saw that she couldn't get it to where she wanted it and i still have it exactly the way it is with some of the, the pieces mixed up and put where they don't belong, the needle's still in it, the thread's still there. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm not gonna fix it and finish it for her because that was a special time we had with her. And, and to let her know that it's all right, mom, there's other things we can do. And so I found another one of her loves was painting. So I had a young gal come in from church and it would kind of give me a break so I could go away for about an hour, you know, do whatever. And mom would sit in her chair with, we set up a painting table and she would have, you know, Bob Ross or whoever on the, on the recording that I would record for it. And the gal would put the brush in the paints and hand it to mom and just play like one minute, one little section at a time on the video recorder. And mom would just paint that part. Now, one thing that happened with my mom and this doesn't happen with everybody, if she could only see half the page. So you could give her a big piece of paper like this, but she would only paint on one side of it. Um, and it's just the way her brain was working. But what she painted was still really good. She enjoyed the time. She loved the young gal that was there. They just talked and enjoyed each other. And, and I got a break. So for those of you that are staying home, taking care of parents, um, if you can find somebody to come in you know, one hour a week, it really helps out because you need to take care of you. That is so important to do. Right. Because you are valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to talk about that. Is that okay if I do that now? Well, we're going to jump, jump to our first break and okay. then when we get back, we're going to totally jump into all that. I know you're just, all right. you know, I'm kind of anxious for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting we're getting there, but we want to get to know like really who you are and and how you got into this amazing area of mentorship and writing books and that to me is fascinating to understand your journey. Yeah. I think there's more for me, it brings me more value when I understand um the person behind the, yes. the, the work that they're doing. It it really shows me um how the picture was painted. Uh, as it were, for the person you become. Okay, everybody, Absolutely. we got so much more. Obviously, LS is going to be going crazy when we get back. So you are listening to the Value in You show with LS Kirkpatrick, our newest host, host here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm Christine McIver. Do not go anywhere. We've got so much more to share with you and um, stick around. We will be right back after this short break. You've completed college or university, or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more, or were you? Yes, we each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show 
with your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for the Value in You show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Value in You show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Oh, wow. Here we are. Here we are, everyone. It is uh, an amazing day. Ellis Kirkpatrick is welcomed to our Inspired Choices Network platform. This is her new show called Value in You, and I'm just really enjoying getting to know you. You have such a fun, enjoyable spirit. It's so lively, and um, I have a lot of questions about that because of the title of your show but we're going to get there in a second so if you missed the first segment you got to come back and listen because we're learning about the journey so you, you've you've been taking care of your mom then where do you move to what, what was your next journey that's funny you say move uh, we moved a lot when I was growing up I was was just writing about it in another book and we moved 17 times uh, or I went to 17 different schools. I mean, sometimes we moved three times during the year. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting. So, so mom, mom did pass away, and um, you know, my kids are growing up. I've got grandkids now. I'm writing to, um, telling them stories, singing them songs, making up things. We're just having a lot of fun. Grandkids are so much fun. And then my husband's job takes us to. The next state over to Idaho and in Idaho I couldn't tuck my grandkids into bed I couldn't be involved in their life every week not nearly as much you know you can talk on the phone and whatnot but you know being there it's just a difference and so I had to ask them you know what they were doing what was going on and I would um, write stories for them based on that either stories that um were about them specifically or about, you know, like a holiday or something that was going on. Or I would send them a story about what was going on with me. Now I've been taking photographs since I was probably sixth grade when I got my first camera. And I take way too many photographs, but it's so much fun and I love sharing them. And so I put the story and the photographs in the book through those things you can get online. And then I would send them to them and I'd keep one so we could share them together. And that was a lot of fun. And one of the, the stories that I did, my daughter told me, you have to print this and have it out there for everybody else. And I said, no, 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 no. That's just for them. Nobody else will understand. She goes, no, mom, you've got to do it. it took me three years. And I finally did do it. I finally did that. But that wasn't the first book I published. I wrote wrote a story. I don't know where they come from. You know, I wake up three in the morning. It's like, oh, I just got to write this down, you know, or I'm sitting somewhere and something pops in my head. And it's like, oh, I've got to write that down. <laughs> I finally carry a notebook with me all the time. I've got, got a notebook and post notes in my purse that I carry with me because you're, you're always going to find something that triggers something. If you don't write it down, you do forget it. So you need to do that as soon as you can. Um, Anyways, to make a really long story short, I ended up publishing three books. I didn't do anything. And I thought, I've got to figure out what's going on. Why didn't they sell? 
and I saw this post on YouTube to join this group. And so I joined in January of 2022 and I published my first book um, with a real publisher um, in July of last year. And since then I counted, I have not counting the first three books, I have 20 books that I've done since then. And eight of them, eight of the books I've been involved in are uh, international, are bestsellers. Not that's, all of them are international, but some of them are. And it's that's been fantastic. an amazing journey. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic. So what led you to the mentoring that you're doing today? Oh, you have to have the mentor. One of the things that, that I found out, you know, listening to other people is if your mentor and coach does not have a mentor or coach, get rid of them because you need to have someone who's been ahead of you to tell you how to get there. Not so much to tell you, but to guide you. And that's why, you know, I just put guiding coach. I don't just put coach because I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to guide you so you can make the decisions, but I'm going to use the wisdom and the knowledge that I've gained to what does work, what doesn't work. And this is why it does or doesn't work. And then you still make your own choices on what you want to do, but you need a little guidance to the direction you want to go to. Um, right. One of the things I've learned is the difference between a travel guide and a travel agent. The travel agent will sell you the tickets to wherever you want to go, but the travel guide will tell you all the fun places to go there, the best restaurants to eat, mm -hmm. the places to not go to, to make your trip more enjoyable, but you still decide which ones you want to go to and, and partake in. And so, yeah, I, I definitely guide. Excellent analogy. So what brought you into that, Alice? Because you're writing, but what brought you to doing this body of work that you're doing now? Um, so the podcasting came from the group I was in. We had to do something. We had to do a summit or a mastermind or whatever. And I did a summit and I loved it, but I had so many speakers. I ended up with eight speakers on that summit, but I had so many others that wanted to speak and I said, well, let's just do a live, you know, let's try that out and see what it's like. And so we did a live and, and then we did another one. Then I ended up doing my, my first show was Roaring Like Lions. And then I changed it to a live to roar. And it was all about, you have a voice and you need to get it out there. People want to hear what you have to say. Don't ever think that, that you don't matter or you don't have a voice because you do. You need to find a way to get it out there. Mm -hmm. And having coaches get you there the right way like with you <laughs> <laughs> yes we met about a little more than a year ago over email and then yeah. just gotten to know each other so so you, you're you're mentoring and you're guiding people today you're writing books and and you've come to the conclusion that it's time to really speak to people on a global platform uh about the value in you. So talk to us about the value in you. What is that yeah. all about? I had to, you know, I was just kind of like swimming in the lake. I didn't know what I really wanted to do. What was my purpose? And, and I'm a woman of faith. And I said, God, you got to show me what to do. I'm, I'm starting to drown here and I don't know what's going on. What is my purpose? What do I need to be doing? And so he showed me. And it just, you know, I don't believe in coincidence. I think things really do happen for a reason. And, and sometimes you just see the hand of God working, which is the most amazing thing. But I just started seeing that throughout my whole life, I've always been an encourager. And part of that is showing people the value in them. So this is what I want everyone to know. You are valuable. You have great value in you. You are worthy and you are enough. And your value does not run out like energy. Energy is where you have a bowl of water and you're taking water out, pouring it into other people's bowls. Yours runs out, you go back and get more. It doesn't work that way with value. Value is who you are inside. It comes from you yourself. And this value never runs out. The more, whatever value you give, you actually get more value back into you. It's just amazing the way this works. Um, so your value comes from you. Nobody else 
will ever have what you have, not in the past, not in the future. And the reason is because you are the only one who has had to make the choices or who has made the choices that you have made or has had to live with the choices that directly affected you. And on those, you made choices. So it comes from you because you are now unique because of all of this that you've lived, the life you've lived, you can give from yourself what nobody else can give. That's your value. Um, you know, I, I, I just wrote, wrote a chapter in a book and I'm going to read part of it to you. Okay. Um, you are valuable. Who you are and the value inside of you is worthy. You are enough as you are. We can all grow and gain more wisdom and knowledge, but you need to know that you are enough right now. As you take a step forward into your purpose of who you are and why you're here, you will gain all those other things. You are enough. And I know this because there's never been anyone like you. There's never going to be anyone like you. And you can only get from a place that nobody has ever had or ever will have. It gives you a unique perspective and others need you. That's fa fabulous. And those words, I, I completely agree with you. What, what would you say to someone who is struggling with self-doubt, who is struggling with feeling like imposter syndrome? What, what, what can we possibly share with them? Because for them, these words that you're sharing with us may not ring true for them where for where they are right now. They're true wherever you are. You just don't believe it yet. And you need to believe it. Um, you know, first thing you need to do is one, be kind to yourself. Um, you have to take care of you. You have to say nice things to yourself. You have to forgive yourself for things that maybe you've done in the past or that, oh, if I would only done this, if I'd only done that, don't think that. That's in the past, leave it there. It doesn't belong here anymore. Um, you need to believe the truth about you. And maybe you don't believe it now, but keep saying it to yourself. Say nice things to you. I, I know that I've come from a place of huge self-doubt, of feeling very unworthy, um, being told I was never enough for a lot of years. And it's like, I don't believe it anymore. Tell you, give yourself daily affirmations. You can look them up online, come up with your own, but make sure they're positive daily affirmations. You know, like in saying, I am so busy. Well, that's good. But what you really need to say is I am highly productive. Mm. Because busy can just be busyness. But when you're productive, you're actually accomplishing something. Um, everybody is valuable. And if you don't think you are, then you need to start telling yourself that you are. And this will help change that brain that's saying all these negative things to you and start making positive things. I call it mindset. I didn't even know there was such a thing until last year, probably about April. And it's like, oh, I've never heard that before. What does that mean? And so I started finding out more about it. If you don't know what your purpose is, ask people around you, what is it about you that people like see if they come up with the same thing you know I asked my siblings um, and my brother's pretty quiet and he was the first one to write back to me and tell me that from the time I was very young I always encouraged him so you know in in the at the time it was like I was 62 and I never once knew that and to mm. hear him say that just really affected me deeply and it's like so I've always been this way. I only thought I'd been that way since I was like 45 or something. And, right. and it's like, okay, so I do have a purpose somewhere in there and, and pray about it. Read your Bible. That's where I found mine. It's, you know, I read the verse where it says, go and make disciples. You have a purpose in this, this world. And it's like, hmm, that's interesting. It is interesting. And guess what else is interesting? We're up to our next break already. Oh, already. It goes so fast. <laughs> well, you know, when you're having fun, time really does oh, fly. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, everybody, we are up to our next break. You're listening to the Value in You show with LS Kirkpatrick. I'm Christine McIver, and we are on the Inspired Choices Network. If you have questions, comments, absolutely wherever you are, please put them there or come join us and ask some questions in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Stick around. We're going to be right back with more of LS Kirkpatrick. You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more. Or were you? Was I? Yes. We each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Alice Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Alice Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Oh, we're back to the show. Oh, this is excellent. I'm just having so much fun with you, LS. And I, and I was wondering during the break, is, is the value that you personally have found within yourself, has it also come forward when you're having more fun? Do, do you find that when you are in joy and having pleasure and, and laughter and, and really just choosing that energy, because I do think that you're consciously doing this, do you find your value in there? Is that something that we can be doing or, or utilizing to our advantage as a tool? I never thought of it that way before. You know, why not? <laughs> why not? But I, well, I know I, for me personally, it's it's when I'm talking to people, and and somebody will say something like that really happened. I'll I'll give you an example. Um, when I was working at the factory, you know, you have a few people that you know all the time, you eat lunch with all the time, and you say hi to everybody. You know, small town, you know everybody. Well, one day I'm sitting by myself, one of the rare moments, and this gal comes over and sits beside me, and it's just like this this heaviness is around her and I thought well it's okay so I said hi you know and we talked for a little bit and then she starts talking to me from deep in her heart and she says somebody told me I'm not going to heaven and it was a family member and I said why and they said because of the things I've done or you know that I do that that I'm just I'm not going to go to heaven and she was was so disturbed by this. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I believe. And I believe that once you've said you want Jesus in your heart and you want to live for him, he's always there. He doesn't get up and leave because, you know, one of the verses in the Bible says, God says, I am not like man and who changes their mind. He doesn't do that. And I told her, I said, you know, nobody else can say what's in your heart or what's going to happen to you spiritually, except you and God. That's between the two of you, nobody else. And it doesn't matter what you do or what you've done, because that's not how you get to heaven. 
it's a choice you've made to believe that God is who he says he is, that the Bible is, you know, God's word. And it's between the two of you. And whatever anybody else says, don't listen to them because they're probably just feeling bad that they think they're not going to heaven. And we kept talking for a little bit. And as we talked, I saw her sit up straight. I saw this, this heaviness just disappear on her. And lunch was over and as she walks away, she's bouncing in her walk. And what a change. I mean, you know, that's value right there. That's value I get to see. Sometimes you say things or do things and you don't get to see how your value affects people, but know that it does. And maybe you say something to one person and that person takes that and says it to another person. And that person says, you know, to another person who says it to 100 people. So your value keeps giving. It's, it's mm -hmm. not just a one time and then it's done. It's, it's always out there. Um, so yeah, don't ever, ever limit yourself to where you think your value is. Your value is everywhere. And if it's when you're happy and, and joyful, that's, that's good. You can also have value in sadness on, on you know, um, when there's been a tragedy or something, how you respond to that adds value. Right. There's so, there's so much in that, um, you know, just thinking about when we share, oftentimes I see people that they, they want to help other people and they, they, they want to help and help. And, and I like to say, let's contribute because that person has the ability within them. Um, sometimes the energy of help is like that person's helpless and no one's helpless, right? Because like you're saying, they all have the value in them. But when we are, when it's on our heart to want to contribute to other people, when we are coming from the space of feeling valuable, we can contribute to others in a much stronger uh, way. And the energy just rings true, right? If we're trying to help other people, but we feel like we're not good enough or, you know, we're, we're doubting ourselves. We're, there's going to be a different energy when we're, when we're working with other people, when we're showing up in the world, we're going to, we're going to definitely show up differently. And, and I just love that idea of, you know, looking inside first, look mm -hmm. inside first. There's so many things that, you know, they're challenging in the world today, LS and, there are people that are struggling. There's there's lots of conflict and that you can see with ease. Mm -hmm. And there are also amazing people in the world like yourself who are out here banging the drum of what is really, really important and where we need to cultivate first, right? It's like, you know, I, I can hear my mom when we were younger saying, you know, take care of your own house first, like take care of your own business, yes. sweep right? around your own back door, <laughs> sweep around your own back door. That's another good one. Yeah. Um, when Did you know, those actually come from the Bible, <laughs> Do they? I, I actually found the Bible verse where it tells you, you know, and, and it goes to that one that says, take the log out of your eye before you try to take a stick out of your neighbor's eye, you know? Right. Right. Of course. Um, when, when you have been in self-doubt, what did you do? What were some of the things that you did to start bringing yourself out of that self-doubt? Yeah, I was, I was pretty mean to myself. Mm. I, I tell you what, you know, when you start getting into those pity parties, into those bad talking to yourself, think what I say this to my best friend, what I say this to someone I really love, and 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to say, no, I would never talk like this to anybody else. So stop talking to yourself that way. You are making a choice to be mean to you. So make a choice to be nice to you. Make a choice that, yeah, this is a really horrible situation, but it's not going to stop me. You know, I love the little clip and, I, and I'm going to take this from you, Steve Harvey. Sorry, but you put it out there and I'm taking it. Um, where he talks about, think about all those things in your past that you thought you was never gonna get through. And you did. That means you have a 100% success rate 
right yeah. now, right where you are. And you're going to get through the next one. You may not know how. You don't have to know how. You just need to know you're going to get through it. And you're mm -hmm. going to find a way. Um, when I was in a very unhealthy situation, I finally realized, you know, I haven't been praying. I haven't been doing stuff that I need to do. And so I said, okay, God, I'm tired of trying to do everything myself. I do need you. I can't do this on my own. And then these things would come in the mail or a friend would say something to me. And it was just like all these little things kept going on, you know, and little things collected make a really big thing. Some people think they have to do really big things. And, and no, it's, it's you need to do those really little things that add up to a really big thing. So wherever you are, if you're feeling down, say to yourself, I'm going to choose to not feel down anymore. I am going to choose to be happy. I'm going to find ways to be happy. And, and I know that sometimes it's tough when finances are not there and it scares you and you don't know what's going on. But just say, even though this is tough and this is happening, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm going to take another step and do it. Right. So true. And, you know, the other thing that I, I often think about, and, you know, I've been there too. I've, I've been in that place of self-doubt and criticizing myself. And I'm so good at that. Like, I am so yeah. brilliant at that. And <laughs> but, I'm better. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Here we go. Here we go. One of the biggest things is put your hand up. Put your hand up and ask someone to assist you and contribute to you, put your hand up. You know, we talk often about, I want this and I want this and I want this. And I did this, you're going to love this. <laughs> I did this program a few years ago. It was called Up Your Ask. So we don't, <laughs> I knew you would love that. We don't ask, We're, we often are focused on one or two little things and we miss all of the things that are actually coming to us because we're not widely looking at it. But the other thing that I discovered is that most people are really poor at receiving. Yes. They're really oh, yeah. poor at receiving. So be willing to up your receiving. Be willing to put your hand up, like with LS, work with a mentor like herself and receive what she is gifting to you. You didn't come to a planet with by yourself you're at a planet where there's a community everywhere you turn and and i think that's so important so if someone wants to work with you um they can go to your website ls and and they can find what are some of the services that you do with people especially in this area um well i have have a program that was a lot of fun it's called find your me and it's helping you find your purpose in life you know um if, if you want to do it through faith-based, there are so many Bible verses out there to help guide you to what your purpose is. I remember being in college, it goes, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in life. What is my purpose? What am I doing here? And for a lot of us, you know, at a Christian college, what do we do? We didn't bother to look and see what the Bible said. <laughs> it's like, how weird is that? But I think it's just, you know, the nature of the beast, so to speak. We think it has to be out there somewhere, but it's not. Think about, about who you are inside. So find your me. Uh, another program, you know, if you want to write a book about it or if you want to start a business, you know, I have, have the, uh, um, well, I don't have my book here with me. Um, I have five strategies that you can do to make sure you get a good foundation. Um, get that blueprint that's made just for you. Follow, you know, if you want to call it a recipe, whatever, you want to name it so that you can get on the road to where you really want to go. And it's okay if you start out somewhere and you realize, well, this is nice, but it's not quite where I'm at. And I like this. You can take those little detours as long as they don't take you too far away, unless you realize this is the way I need to go. This is my detour. This is, is the other one was a detour. This is my main road to go on. Um, and sometimes you'll be, get going and I have to emphasize this sometimes you're going and going and going you're working out so hard and you finally throw up your hands says that's it I quit I can't take it anymore stop and take a pause 
don't quit. Just take a pause. There is nothing wrong with a pause. A pause just means that you are reassessing, you're reevaluating, and you're making sure you're going in the right direction and then go in the direction you think you need to go to. Pauses are great. So those are two of your- Don't ever stop. Right. So those yeah. are two of your programs. Yeah. Fabulous. And they can work one on one with you as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. We could do group settings. I do one on one. Um, Excellent. We just want to get you to where you want to be. That's the whole purpose is to get you where you want to be. Excellent. Okay. So the website again is lskirkpatrick.com. Dot com. It's very easy to find her for sure. Well, we are up to our final break of the show. Um, I know it's, we're coming to the close of it, but you know what that means, LS? We're coming to the close, but we're one step closer to hearing you again next week. So That's this right. is a good thing. <laughs> All right, everyone, you're listening to the Value in You show with our host, LS Kirkpatrick on the Inspired Choices Network. Stick around. We'll be right back. You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more. Or were you? Yes. We each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Well, this has actually been one of the funnest interviews that I, and I think that's a word, funnest <laughs> interviews that I have done. And uh, with a lot of laughter and a lot of seriousness and a lot of dancing. And this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Learning to have the value in you is, is I think it's one of the greatest gifts that we can actually give the world and yes. and not just ourselves, right? Um, what is one of the values in you, LS, that people aren't aware of? Oh boy, <laughs> I'm probably not aware of it either then. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's a really tough question. <laughs> just spring it up on me like that. You know, that just came through my head. <laughs> I, I just don't know how to answer that. One of the values that people know that I don't know or that people don't know that I know. Yes. I, don't know. I just, second. you know, I, I grew up with a grandfather who said, I've never met a stranger, only a friend I haven't known before. And that's the way my family was. That's the way I raised my kids is you look at people not for what they give you or what they do, but you look at them as the way you would want to be looked at. You know, I, I really believe in the golden rule that I grew up with and it was in all the schools and it was you treat others the way you want to be treated. And I think your life is so much better when you do that, when you're looking at, at people the way you would want to be looked at. You know, now I know, we're not gonna be able to get along with everybody. Nobody expects anybody to do that. But maybe instead of you know seeing the person on the bus who's being grumpy or sad, find out what's going on in the world. You know, just thought of a, a song and I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. But it's talking about, you know, look beyond what you see. You see a mom who looks tired and she's got kids running all over the place, but the song talks about how her husband just died two weeks ago and she just doesn't know what to do by herself. 
you know, it talks about the old man who's, who's grumpy and doesn't want anybody to sit with him because he just lost his wife and he's lost without her. Um, you know, one thing everybody knows about me, I've got a big heart and, and I'll cry. <laughs> I'll get emotional, but, but it's because I care so deeply about people. I, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't like to see people hurt, but I know that that hurting is a part of going through life. One thing I want to say, if, if you're calling yourself a failure, if you think you're failing, stop. Failure is not a bad word. Failure is something you tried and it's not working. So try something else. And, and if it's in a, a relationship or whatever, see what you can do to make it better. Um, but start with you first. It always starts with you first and go from there. That's so good. That's so good. Well, we know that you've got a big heart. That's very, very obvious. You love to have fun. That's incredibly wonderful and inviting. Um, I didn't know you were a big crier. So welcome to the club. <laughs> I've got a box of tissue behind my book here. Oh no, I like, to see, the I, like to see, I like to see the mascara <laughs> roll down my face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You know, to, to, to cultivate value in you is not a one-time experience. It's, it's definitely a daily experience and one that, that is such a gift to ourselves when we start to really bring ourselves present with ourselves. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the world. There's, there's a lot of people out there trying to catch your attention, a lot of opportunities to, to play online and to go to events and so on. Taking five minutes a day to find the value in you. It, it, that to me is like, it's like planting your seeds and, and getting those roots really, really strong within you. What's one thing you do every day, LS, to uh -huh. cultivate your value? I'm so glad you asked because I wanted to say this, you know, I was listening to Lizzie just before my show and she's talking about taking 10 minutes. I have to tell you this. And I actually looked this up online. It has been said that when you improve one thing by 1% using only 14 minutes each day, you will gain a 37% return on your investment. This is my part, what I'm telling you, you are a good investment. Then it goes on to say in about 365 days, that's 3,700% improvement. So what I do, I actually have it scheduled in my calendar every day, 14 minutes. I get away from everything and go do something. Sometimes we just walk out to the mailboxes. Our mailbox is a long ways from our house. And sometimes they just go outside and sit in the sunshine. Um, but I do something that that gets me away from all the digital the electronics, from all of the noise that's going on. And if I don't do that, I really notice a difference. And so you need to find 14 minutes every day. And I'm telling all of you out there that are watching this, what is it that you want to do? And it doesn't have to be the same thing every day. It doesn't have to be the same thing every week. But in 14 minutes, what can you do that's going to improve your life 3,700% every year? That's fantastic. I love that. And I've never heard that before. I have never oh. heard about the 14 minutes and the percentages. And I love numbers. So that really is ringing to me. I love, love, love that. Thank you so much for saying yes to bringing your voice to the world. Uh, to Thank bring you for letting me. For bringing your heart to the world. Um, the world absolutely can use more love and kindness and and absolutely some more guidance and, and a little bit of a kick in the butt too. You know, we all need to have a little wake up. <laughs> if you're not on video, she just jumped as if I kicked her. Uh, we all need a little bit more wow. of all of that. <laughs> we all need a little bit more of that in our lives and and to be able to experience such joy and and to really to have a life that, you know, that we are enjoying, like be here, or be now and enjoy it. So we're at the end of the show. Thank you so much, LS. You'll be back again oh, next you. week with the value in you two o'clock Eastern, one central 12 
Mountain and 11 Pacific on the Inspired Choices Network. Bye, everyone. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to The Value in You Show. Ellis returns Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember that you have great value. You are worthy. And you are enough.